Douglas, can I say what a pleasure it is to welcome you to Clarence House. You've always got your first reading memories, mm -hmm. even if you were very young. Can you remember what books you read to start off with? Actually, it's it's given me a lifelong passion for this author, but it was the works of Thomas Hardy. It was actually Tess of the Durbervilles, oh. uh, I think, was the very first book I read for pleasure from cover to cover. Um, and in fact, Tess is an inspiration in, for Shuggy Bain, because I think very much about all the the forces that affected Tess in the 1890s, and then in the 1980s, Agnes is still, uh, you know, really affected by the men in her life. I can't even tell you how important the library was in my childhood, and it was always just a very safe space. It was a tranquil space, um, and it was a place that you could go and sort of shut out the world. It's the peace and quiet of a library, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You can go in there. Everybody's quiet, you've mm -hmm. got time to think. I think that's why nowadays it's so important to keep these libraries in schools. As you say, libraries are crucial because children need an awful lot of peace in their environment to be able to focus on a book, but also peace within themselves. And libraries, I think, are one of the few places that will allow them to have those moments of respite uh, or just to shut out the world and enjoy a book. What actually gave you the inspiration to sit down and write Shuggy. When I was writing the book, I didn't tell anyone I was trying to write it because I wanted it to be an incredibly personal project. And I was thinking very much about uh, the Glasgow that I grew up in, about my own mother, my own family. So I wanted to memorialize that uh, very clearly, you know, warts and all, but also the strength and the dignity of the characters as well as their struggles. Oftentimes, mother's stories and young queer men yeah. in very masculine places are often invisible. And so Shuggy, for me, became a very personal document in that way to say we were always here. Uh, you know, we're also on this landscape. It must have been a cathartic moment when the book was actually that it was. You've literally given birth to it. That's right. And taking very personal experiences and turning them into a work of fiction forced me to have empathy for, for these characters and to, to not think about really what it was like from one boy's experience, but to think about why mothers might feel that lack of hope or why yeah. the men might act as they were. And, and that's the power of writing fiction, I think. You have to, if you don't agree with what your characters do, you have to at least deeply understand why they would do it. I never knew when I, when I wrote the book, uh, the journey that the book would take me on. I mean, it's utterly transformed my life from winning the booker to being here with yourself and being in, in beautiful Clarence House. Uh, I couldn't have imagined any of it. Well, it's been a pleasure having you here. Um, I think before we sign off here, I think you'll agree we, we wish all the uh, booker nominees the very best of luck. We do.